So, bonjour, hi, hello, welcome to the stream. I'm Frank Boucher, a Microsoft Cloud Advocate, and today with me I have another Microsoft Cloud Advocate. Tirini, hi, welcome to the stream, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Could you introduce yourself, maybe explain what you do a little bit? You have a, a focus yeah. and a, yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, I'm Tierney Siren. Uh, I'm a senior cloud developer advocate uh, at Microsoft in the open source engineering team. So what that entails for me is I generally focus on open source work um, and then kind of working to help uh, teams at Microsoft understand that and bring product feedback around uh, open source projects and how developers using those open source projects would want to interact with Azure or XYZ other product. Uh, so yeah, I, I spend the majority of my time working on open source. So I contribute directly to Node. Um, I'm chairperson of the community committee there. I also work on Electron. Um, I'm ramping up some stuff with NPM. Um, and then I, you know, work in the OpenJS Foundation as well as a, a member of the Cross Project Council there. So the, the higher level uh, co committee, I guess, is what we would call it in Node, but it's a, a council and the foundation. So yeah, that's a lot of what I do is just working on open source, uh, helping, uh, you know, ship ship some nice things, better imp help improve developer experience there, and then also bring that back, that context back to Microsoft and kind of helping Microsoft understand how to uh, help uh, engage with those projects meaningfully. Awesome. But that's really JavaScript focused, but you're still involved, like obviously because we, we will be doing some Azure today, but it, yep. is it always related to Azure or like it's, I'm assuming a lot of uh, time it's really like language focus. Yep, yep. So I, I focus a lot on the language itself. Um, and then basically like that, that gives me context. So like, for example, with ESM in, in Node, um, I can go kind of focus on that, learn a bit about it, help create content for it in the project, help drive it to be a better developer experience in like docs and stuff. Now, I didn't work on ESM in Node, um, but like help kind of give talks and stuff about that. And then when a product team in, in Microsoft in Azure says, hey, we need to be caring about ESM in Node, I can then go help them say, here's all the things you need to know. Here's the things you can ignore. Um, here's uh, what you need to do to make this good developer experience uh, moving forward as ESM starts getting traction. And the same goes for like worker threads or, you know, uh, HTTP3 or any any kind of, or I guess, quick, um, but that kind of feature. Um, and so it helps, basically, I can become a, um, SME for deeper parts of the language and the, the platform um, and help uh, Azure folks uh, really lean into that and start kind of getting ahead in in that space uh you know before those things actually end up shipping cool and then yeah and then you know i i get to go play with those things uh on azure itself once they're there which uh you know i get to build nice apis for for node folks and stuff like that so nice and what what do you have for us on on azure what like what's the plan of today yeah, so today we're going to start out uh, building an Express app using Node. So uh, we're going to start from, you know, initialization of the project uh, all the way up to, you know, we have an Express app that's working and running, and then we're going to end up deploying that into to app service. And then if we have time into uh, ACI, so Azure Container Instances, um, and kind of, you know, show the process of building the app and then going into just getting it into Azure and, you know, getting it on the, the public internet. Cool. So should we get started? Let me share your yeah. screen. And boom. Cool. So I've gone ahead and created a tiny directory here. There's there's nothing here. Like Using... right now, like because it is in the bottom of the, the screen, we 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 won't see a lot of it because the my face is, that better? is in the way. Uh... <laughs> your face is in the way, okay. You can do full screen if you want. Oh, that's definitely okay. better. Okay, cool. I will yeah, because well, like in the lower corners, there's you and there's me. And in the top left, there's a title. So right now it's Node on Azure. It's a little bit gotcha. of overlay design here. Gotcha, cool. Is that good though? Yeah, that's perfect. Cool. 
So I'm just going to get started here, just initializing the uh, the repo itself. So I'm going to do npm init y. So are you familiar with npm init? No. The, that command specifically? Okay. Oh, like, so what like I, I start, like, let's let's go, let's be clear. By the way, hi, everyone in the chat. Hi, Michael. Hi, uh, oh. don't break the rules. <laughs> making fun of me because I was concent concentrate, make sure the, the volume was was good. Um, so I just started, seriously, just started, yeah. I think it's three weeks ago with Node. And I was yeah. having some help from, of course, my community, building a chatbot using JavaScript. So I did some NPM uh, in it to install, I forgot. And I did a few yeah. commands, but like I was, doing what they are telling me like i didn't yep. dig into it so like go go ahead and, and explain i will be happy yeah so npm init um basically by default is a interactive cli gives you you know a little bit of context it allows you to fill in package name version description entry point tests get repo keywords license uh and it then you know, as as you fill that information in, I was just hitting enter there because I generally go for the defaults. Um, but uh, you know, I was just hitting enter. But if you do actually here, so I'm going to remove. Oh, uh, actually no, let's do no. Uh, so yeah, we have we, we didn't ha create a package JSON with that. So if we do npm net y, um, it just creates it. So like I don't have to hit enter 50 times, um, which is oh. something that a lot of people don't know exists and they just hit enter every time which I is didn't, a really nice thing i, that I definitely didn't know that's awesome like yeah we'll never do that again <laughs> yeah yeah and so you'll actually notice here that one it defaulted to mit which npm by default like itself chooses isc which is a variant of mit oh. um okay. and then it also actually set my name uh my email and my my personal url as the author and then it set it to version one uh, or 0 0.0.1. .0 so I actually set all these up myself with npm config. So like npm uh, config uh, init dot version. And then you can do like, I don't know, if you want to do like 20, if you want to set your, oh, nope. Okay, so oh, it's set. it's very uh, similar, like, you know, like the variables you have when you use git. And yeah, like the exactly. like, and like since it came after the .NET has the same kind of uh, wizard when you start a new project, the scaffolding or like the wizard experience. I'm assuming yep. Node came before, so it was inspired from Node. But it is like, yeah, yeah it felt very uh, home homey. I I believe one of the people who uh, uh, actually works. I, I don't know if that's. I, I'm not super familiar with uh, like .NET. Is are you talking about NuGet specifically in that that space? No, well, like when you create a new project in uh, in .NET, mm -hmm. you do .NET new, or gotcha. and like you and then like you say, let's say you want to do a I don't know a Blazor. Blazor is really hair uh, popular these days, so you could do .NET new Blazor, yeah. or like if it's an, an API .NET new API, and then like you could have some question that will pop up just like you show. Uh, yeah, so now I, I'm intrigued and I will yeah. go check in .NET if I have that dash Y so I could skip a few of those uh, questions <laughs> next time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so like, you know, I just want to get this set up. Uh, so we're going to actually just run with that. I'll change the version a bit later. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to want to initialize this as a, a Git repo. So, you know, get in it. Uh, and then we're actually, so uh, do, you know, do you know what MPX is? And uh, MPX specifically. That's that's what I said because I realized I sl might have slurred that a bit. Oh, I, you, you know what? I that? think I saw you doing NPX a while Love back. NPX. NPX is great. So NPX is NPM. It, it's basically NPM install globally and then run whatever the bin is. So if I do NPX git ignore node, you know, let me get ignore. Me there it is. So it, it's a bit funky though, because now you look kind of, you look outside the <laughs> monitor and I'm oh, looking here. you right in the face, but this way we won't be in the here. way. It just, it, it looks like we are talking okay. to each other a lot. <laughs> <I can't remember. laughs> uh, so well, I'll, I'll uh, try to move myself a little bit. <laughs> here, wait here, I can, if I can do this in terminal rather than in the integrated terminal in VS Code, if that helps. 
Uh, like that's fine. Terrain like that. I, I move away. It's just uh, like the the visual is a little bit, bit, you know, strange when you look at Weird. your screen, but like that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, I guess we'll go with that. So basically, uh, I'm gonna do npx git ignore node. So git ignore is actually a module that here. So pull this up. Uh, npm dot im git ignore. Uh, so. This is actually a module that just pulls a git ignore from the M the uh, repo that GitHub maintains. So they maintain a bunch of different git ignore files for like you know .NET or Rust or C Sharp or whatever. So they maintain a bunch of those files. So you can just use this module to uh, ran add any git ignore. So I generally use this pretty aggressively for Node. Of I can just type npx git ignore Node. And then if we look over here, I, th oh, I, I think need, this I one. need to uh, to pause a few seconds because we got raid. Oh, we got hey. raid by 95 oh. raiders from Visual Studio. Welcome everybody. We're doing Node GS on Azure with Trini, and we're just getting started. So you join at the perfect timing. So welcome everybody. Oh. Feel free to ask questions in the chat. We're just getting started, so you didn't miss anything. We just did. A npm init and now git and uh, Trini is explaining the magic of npx git ignore. Yep. So let's yeah. Let's, con so... Con let's continue now. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. <laughs> You're good. Uh, yeah. So npx basically just goes and fetches the tarball of the package and then runs whatever the if it has a bin, um, it'll run that bin. So in this case, uh, I ran npx git ignore node. And the bin of Git, the Git ignore module just goes and fetches the uh, node Git ignore file from GitHub uh, from their repo, and then actually just it just pops it out into our uh, into our project here. So I do that as kind of like an extension to npm init of like I'm always gonna want to Git ignore because uh, node modules basically. Uh, yeah. So it's real nice to be able to just run that and not have to go copy paste it from the internet or run a curl command or something like that. Oh. I use uh, an extension, Visual Studio extension to do that. I'm assuming yeah. in oh, the oh, back, I... it's probably calling that. Uh... <laughs> it's, I bet you it's getting it from GitHub, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because you know, like if I have different kind of project, I could do, yeah, yeah, it's a Visual Studio project or like it's this language project. So it looked very similar, the experience is like, yep, get ignored and it's like, that's cool. By yeah. use Visual Studio. It's um, nice that you have it right and, you know, yeah. as a command. I've actually I've set up a shell script that just does all of my commands, but I wanted to make sure I go through them so I don't do too much magic. Um, yeah, so I, I have two more that I do. So I do npx license MIT. Oh. So there's a module called license okay. that will go and fetch a license. I think, I think they changed this one to be, uh, oh, npx. Uh, I think they changed this one to be interactive. So let me just pull that real quick, because uh, so I did list the license in package JSON, uh, but you still want to include like listing it there doesn't actually mean it's licensed like that. Um, like if you say it's licensed like that, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it is. So you still want to actually include the license file. So similar thing, this goes and fetches that module, pulls down the like, MIT license and fills it out. Um, I believe it just pulls my name and stuff from uh, from Git, uh, from the Git config. So oh, like, this is uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I want that. It's really good. <laughs> yeah. I need to edit all the time those files when I create a new project. Yep. So I think you can also do MPX license uh, MIT and it'll just, you'll, it'll skip the interactive bit. Um, I used to have to do license, but they changed that and it keeps breaking my shell scripts, which is really annoying. Um, so yeah, it just, you know, running that you'll get my, the MIT license or whatever license you want to have. Um, I think it uses the SPDX, uh, license identifiers. So the Linux foundation project that basically has, uh, is like an authority on licenses. Um, and then the other one I want to do is just make sure I add a, uh, a, um, Code of conduct. So I'm just going to do cubgen, which this will add. Uh, this will add the contributor covenant, which is used by a bunch of projects. It's used 
it modified by the uh, OpenJS Foundation, by Node, by Electron, by Linux, I think, by quite a few projects at this point. So this is generally what I try to follow, largely to keep consistency with the rest of the ecosystem. So if you just run npx pubgen, this was broken for a bit, so I hope it's fixed now. I think they fixed it. Cool, they did. Um, yeah, so basically it just goes and puts out the code of conduct there. Um, and you can actually see if I do, yeah, so, so I don't care if y'all have my email address, uh, but yeah, so this is like basically reach out to me if you have a problem with something that happens in this repo and it will be taken care of. So by putting in your email address there, it actually autofills it into the, the appropriate place in the, the project, uh, which is really nice. Just very, very nice uh, experience to get that done and kind of get it going. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's, I, uh, now that's... I really want to know if like I I can have those things not just in Node, but yeah. <laughs> Though I'm I'm but... using now Node like for one of my project. I have two project going on on my stream, so like yeah, that yep. will definitely run those things for for that specific project, my JavaScript one. But yeah, yep. for the others, like that's super convenient. So as long as you have Node on the system, uh, as long as you have Node and npm on the system. Um, like the npx get ignore no get ignore and then whatever name the npx cubgen and the npx license you can just run that and it, it, it's not really project specific like as long as you have node installed it'll just put it where whatever directory you're in yeah so it's useful in that way um, and there's a bunch of utility modules like that that I I try to use as often as possible because they're just so nice um, cool so that's like you know that's kind of initializing the project. That's, you know, the first steps I take in any node project I start. Um, now we, we kind of want to actually get into to building it. So in this, uh, we're going to be doing a few things. We're going to be, uh, you know, this is going to be a, a node thing. Uh, we're going to be using Express uh, to start building this application. So like, cool. this is going to be a web server using Express. Um, I'm also, that. yeah. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one my community uh, told me to use. So I. I used it a little bit, like I know probably 1% of it, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Express Express is huge. Um, yeah, it's, it's popular, a massive, I think. Massive thing. Yeah, yeah, by far. I think it's like 80% of HTTP framework or web framework downloads for, for JavaScript that are public. Like, of course, people cache locally or they're in their private registries and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's a huge, huge amount of the ecosystem. Um, so, I also want to just early on, like as a kind of point of project hygiene, you introduce a linter, uh, just because that's kind of the thing that I try to do uh, well with is just making sure that I'm writing clean code the whole time. Um, so I'm going to do two things here. I'm going to do npm i d. So npm i is shorthand for npm install, and then dash d uh, basically says save it as a dev dependency. So ca ca capital D. I think dash lowercase d is normal dependency, but that's implied by just npm i or npm install. So npm i dash capital D says install this as a dev dependency. And then we're going to do standard uh, just because that's what I have been using in every project for the last two years. And it's how I write JavaScript now. Um, so yeah, we're going to use standard. Uh, no semicolons <laughs> is the highlight that everyone knows standard for. Uh, but there's a lot of really good rules, and it's a very good out of the box linter. Cool. Do and then you know, we're also uh, going to fastify. Do... Yeah, I do. Fastify is pretty good. Um, well, because uh, Vino Miss was uh, was asking. So yeah, yeah, you could. Uh... Like, can I advocate? I'm not sure you will be able to do a lot in the chat, but yeah, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Fastify is great. Uh, I know Mateo, Galina, and some of the other collaborators pretty okay. closely. Uh, yeah, Fastify is great. Uh, I, in this case, I want to use Express uh, just because like that's what I'm most familiar with. I've not done anything with Fastify yet, and I, I keep meaning to and not getting to it. But uh, yes, Fastify is very, very good. Uh, would recommend if you get the chance to, or if you have the opportunity to use it for something in production, highly recommend. Um, but in this case, we're going to go uh, npm install express, <laughs> complete opposite of what I just said. Uh, so we're going to yeah, we're going to use express here um, and just kind of try to try to. Uh, 
Well, check we're out trying to to that. to be in common ground for a lot of people, so that's why Express make more sense today. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I think I think you mentioned like it when we were off stream. You you mentioned it. Yeah. To me. I, I was just not sure. That's why I was like, you know that thing, right? Because I like. Yeah. 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 It's a it's a good one. Um, but yeah, I, I I am also just I've been using Express my entire time in JavaScript like since day one. So yeah, it's 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 easier to, to get up a, a demo rolling uh, with with Express for me. Um, yeah, so we've now installed uh, we've now installed both standard and Express. They're going to be in our node modules. Dev dependencies, dependencies, cool. They're both correct versions. Uh, let's change this. Yeah, Node.js, I think it should be on Azure, actually. Uh, so we're just going to change the name real quick. Cool. So uh, let's get started on actually writing our app code. Uh, so let's go here. Uh, so we're going to create a uh, touch app.js. By the way, uh, I realize I'm using shell scripts um, and stuff like that. I'm using WSL. I figure I should mention that. Um, so just using my beefy PC, my gaming PC because uh, it's got lots of power and it's hardwired. Um, but yeah, so using using WSL here, it's honestly, it, it's been really nice to just to be able to move my shell scripts over and to uh, to Windows and WSL and not have to worry about anything. It's uh, It's been real nice. So we have an app.js, cool. So we're gonna wanna start by uh, by going ahead and requiring uh express so you frank you mentioned the other day when we when we were talking before uh about const and let and uh yeah i learned that recently because you know like i say i'm learning node and javascript i did javascript like maybe 15 20 years ago uh yeah. so i learned the javascript back then and kind of not do any javascript since then and when I was reading documentation and stuff, a lot of things were like not using var, they were using const and let, and I was like, well, why? And after that, yeah. I saw some blog post that was explaining that var is kind of the global thing, and let is more the proper way to define of something that will change in the time in a specific scope. And yeah. const where was, was a const. Yeah, so const is also scoped though. So const is is scoped to the specific context. Yeah, um, but it, you cannot change it, right? Yeah, so you can't change it, but it's also so like if we did if just for example, if we did like function a uh, Oh, you mean like yeah, yeah, cool. so you could declare another port inside and it will it will work. Yeah. Right. Right. So no, uh you can't declare another port inside. Uh that's not allowed. But this, so if we did this, if we try to do like, well, uh, if we tried to do that, that lol is not accessible. You can actually see that because it's, it's like, it would be this color, this blue, if it was being called, but because we're not in that scope, um, okay, okay, okay. it's not actually being called. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that's a, it, it's kind of, it's also scoped to this in the same way that like, um, well, so these ones are globally scoped, so these are accessible. So like, if yeah, because did you do... declare it at the root, right? So right, like... right, right. Yeah. So yeah, you can see that's not being called, but like yeah. this one is not accessible here. Yeah, yeah. So that's a that's a useful const is real nice for a lot of things. And actually, standard standard. So if we here, if we actually did this, like if we do this, one thing I really like about standard uh, console dot that that was my fingers were very off. Uh, <laughs> So if we did that, uh, I think if it runs standard. So yeah, basically standard should yell at us because we're never actually reassigning port. So standard will force us. Yeah. So there's a there's a few things here. Um, oh yeah, I don't know why there's a semicolon there. Um, but it'll actually say port is assigned a value but never used. Yeah, that's fine. But it's never reassigned, so it actually forces us into use it or helps us kind of get into the place where we're using the right thing, which is really nice. Um, and that's that's a, a very useful thing to make sure you're kind of having a little bit more safety there uh, in JavaScript at this point is just having, that's just an ESLint rule standard and forces that by default, but uh, that's a good ESLint rule to turn on. Um, 
if if you want. So kind of continuing on the app and stopping getting sidetracked. Uh, I'm gonna just set up the the pass of this. Oh, I don't want E. Uh, so this is kind of the normal pattern of Express. So you require Express. Uh, you, you set up uh, up as an app uh, as your instance of Express, and then you start setting routes. So in this case, we're just going to do, you know, anytime there's a get on the app, so on Express, uh, on the root path, uh, we're going to do a request response. So this is just the normal callback architecture. Yeah. Uh, one of the th one of the nice things about Fastify and some of the other more modern frameworks is that they do allow you to do a promise architecture. Um, so like they allow you to do async await more consistently, kind of, um, and you know promises themselves. Um, Express has asked for that a few times, but they haven't really gotten there at the, this point. Um, and I, I'd be surprised if we do end up getting it in, within the next year or two. Um, so yeah, definitely still callback architecture, but um, it works and it's it's pretty well or pretty pretty well built out and tested. So I try to kind of. Uh, go with it so response.send so we're just going to send a response uh mm -hmm. so i i try to do request and response um I, people sometimes do rec and res yeah. i try to do the fuller one for readability uh request and response and then we're going to send uh let's see. it's the shortcut on windows which is not hello uh Hello from Express. Cool. So if we do that and then we set up the listener. So app.get basically serves, uh, you know, a, uh, a, a get request. Mm -hmm. So when you do app.get slash, anytime there's a get request to that slash, you're, this is what it's going to do. But we also want to make sure we're actually listening um, on, on a port. So here I'm just going to use the port variable. You can just set it as a number, so like you can do, you know, three thousand or whatever. Uh, you can just set that, but I generally like to have that kind of config at the top, uh, just so people can come change it later if they need to, and it's not hard coded. So doing that, and then we're gonna do. Uh, oh wait, sorry. Yeah. So I'm just doing an arrow function here. This is a bit of a shortcut um, to. Uh, so uh, in the chat we have uh, Bonbon was asking yeah. like what's the log the the software you're using? So VS Code, it's a free tool, awesome tool. Right now it's paired with some uh, WSL in the background, so he could be in uh, Linux mode for his uh, CLI. The bottom part, the terminal, is in the yep. is in the Azure. It's a Windows for for uh, what's it again? Like Windows subsystem uh, for, for Linux. Yeah. Yeah. Always mix it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so, so I'm yep. using Ubuntu right now. Uh, uh, either side of Windows. Uh, and then I'm using uh, NVM to control Node. Uh, so that's, you know, a Node version manager. So the Linux version manager for Node inside of Windows, which is how I would highly recommend using Node in Windows at this point. Uh, it's a really good experience. And then, uh, you know, VS Code. Um, and a bunch of extensions, GitHub extension, highly recommend, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, um, I can I can give you a, a list list uh, later of the, the stuff I'm using. But yeah, largely Microsoft technologies um, at this point. Uh, cool. So we I, I kind of as you were, as you were speaking there, I did some work. Uh, so <laughs> this is an arrow function. <laughs> uh, this is an arrow function. Are you familiar with arrow functions in JavaScript? The what? Sorry. Uh, uh, so this is an arrow function. No. Um, are you familiar with arrow functions? Well, like it sounds something. It looks like uh, something I know in uh, in C sharp. So I'm assuming, just kind of a. Yeah. yeah. You're just doing a function so, and then just. Yeah. So like these are basically the same thing. The only there there is a difference. Um, I'm not good at explaining the difference. <laughs> uh, but basically, it, it has to do with the this. Um, I believe it pulls the this from the higher context, 
it, rather than it being scoped to that, the, the current context, although I could be totally wrong on that. Um, but generally, I find this a little bit cleaner to write, especially when I'm doing something small. Um, additionally, it's just you can you can kind of do a little bit a little bit less with it or a little bit more with it in terms of, you know, a one liner. So here I'm actually just calling an anonymous function, no arguments or anything um, because app.listen takes a callback. So we're writing a callback here um, and we're saying basically, you know, in this function, um, because of how JavaScript works, that this is a functionally equivalent to uh, this. So that this is the same thing as this um, because you can kind of continue a statement on one line um, and have it be scoped. Like you can do the same with if uh, true uh, console.log uh, hi. Uh, you know, you can do that and that, that still works. That's an if statement uh, because it's all on the same line. Um, so yeah, we're doing that same thing here, applying that same concept of just saying, hey, here's your callback. It's a console log and saying our app's now listening. So if we do this, uh, if we do node, watch this crash spectacularly. Yep. Uh, so, oh, I already declared express. I somehow duplicated that. I told you, I called it. <laughs> uh, access, cool. And then we should be able to go over here. Oh, that was just to prove do... we're live, right? That it's not recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're uh, live, because, you know, it crashed. Otherwise, we'll have cut that part. Hey, cool. And that, that's also a nice thing uh, about WSL is this is actually, uh, this is my browser in Windows and it's tunneling out the local host in correct port to Windows from WSL. Thank you, Cassie. Really appreciate that link. Uh, yeah, it's really nice that it does that. So yeah, we're now doing Express uh, in Linux WSL uh, using Node.js. So pretty cool. Uh, so let's 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 kind of go from there. Do, first, do you want to? You have any questions, Frank, or anyone in the chat have questions? I'm I'm good. Like I think, cool. I, yes, I had a few like questions because you know, like I said, like I'm new in Node, but yep. then like I want to want to go in the Azure part. Uh, and if yep. we have time, then I, I will ask my question because I don't want to. Cool. Like we we said yep. we will do Azure, so I don't want, like at least we want to get yeah. there. And by yep. the way, I'm I'm cool. like this link. Thank you, KC, for for it. I will I will, I already add it to the show notes, so all the links will be there. When the show go yep. on, uh, we'll have like a YouTube little blog post, everything. All the notes will be there. Yeah. But thanks. So, give me... <laughs> so here, I don't think I actually have the Azure extension. I thought I did. Uh, okay. So we're gonna do Azure. Oh, this might be interesting. Uh, I don't know if I'm authenticated here. I don't. I don't have uh, VPN on this computer. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, app service. So I'm going to get that set up. Uh, yeah. So we're going to install the Azure App Service extension for VS Code. Uh, this is. Oh, I, I was very confused at how this was displaying. It looked like it was the README was erroring. Um, yeah. So I'm going to reload real quick. Um, and we're going to go ahead and plug this code again. Oh, so yeah, we had a question, but I think it's already answered. Yeah. The parameter, like What's... in your uh, declaration, the parameter, it was the um, of your parentheses, parentheses, I think. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So this. Yes. So the it's a request. Basically, the request has everything that the, the client sends. Um, so that kind of helps you get to a spot where you can, uh, you can. Um... If it's an API, what's like the object pass? Like if you had some like part, like, you know, yep. a form submitted so you could read all the information and then your response and where you will put all the, the thing you will send back to the, the caller, right? Yeah. So tiny hiccup here, Frank. I don't have VPN on this computer. <laughs> Do you mind if I switch to my other other video? No, that's fine. I, I, cool. uh, so I will I will s switch real quick. If you want to pull us into uh, the, the, the side by video. side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I will drop from my current camera or my current screen and uh, switch into my Mac uh, screen sharing. If that's cool. Yeah. Cool. Uh, give me one second here. Yeah. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Let's see here. So we're going to do this. Uh, VS Code. everybody's week is going so far mine is busy but busy is good i'm happy busy yeah <laughs> but you know busy <laughs> yeah i am equally busy it's been uh it's been quite a week yeah it's not this week that i will catch up on my netflix uh watch time definitely not <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, Casey. Yeah, I heard of you. Like you have big projects coming up. Oh, but Casey will be on the this stream if she survived this week. Next week she's coming up on uh, Thursday, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, Brett. Brett Miller is here. Welcome to the chat. Happy to see you. Yeah, we should have an emote for uh, for crazy, right? What could it be? I don't know what it could be. Oh, like this maybe? So it looks like, you know, the little dogs say everything is fine. Whoops. Did we lost you, uh, Tierney? And now I just need to make times. Let me present this little dance. Mm -mm -mm. I won't dance. I hear you. Oh, I can hear you. That's not good. Oh, okay. now you're Wi-Fi, right? Yeah, you can... yeah, now I'm Wi-Fi, so that's gonna, be... yeah, it should be, it should be fine. Uh, it seems like it's fixed. So let me screen share real quick. Oh, oh boy, Op operating system preferences. Could you RDP to your? Uh... Well, now you're on that machine, but um... yeah. Ah, uh, that's that's a good point. Well, that's a lot of good. level, uh, but uh, you know. Yep. Give me one sec. Let me. I have to actually pull out my authenticator. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it is Thursday here. Tuesday, sorry. Oh, that's the thing I oh, like. God. I'm always scared, having a lot of fun. Me. No, no, Thursday. No, no, it's Tuesday. Sorry, that's that's my uh, French mouth trying to do his best in English. Uh, so that's one thing I always have fun to do on my stream. I ask people to just mention where they where they are. So I'm in East Canada in Montreal, and uh, yeah, presently it's like uh, two forty something. I know Trini, you're New York based, right? Yeah, I'm in Brooklyn. Yep. So yeah, so share where you come from in the chat. It's always fun to see like uh, you know people coming from everywhere. It's always very uh, interesting. Technology is yeah. so much stuff. Italy, wow, Newfoundland. Oh, nice. Oh, uh, is it is the person from Italy the one who said fastify? Uh, tick, 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 tick. No, I don't think so. Well. Yes. Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. V, Vinimo. Yeah. Ma Ma Matteo Colina, uh, one of the the main per main people on fastify is uh in italy yeah tampa morocco that's so cool it's like that's crazy like i don't like it you know whatever it's always yeah. make me smile like you know yeah globally like you reach out to a bunch of people at the same time and it's like super easy yeah used to be too, so hard yeah and it, it's nice at least that's one kind of benefit of covid right now is that we're all kind of able to to get together a little bit a little bit more yeah in a way yeah in, in a way <laughs> remotely with d distance yeah before the stream we we're just chatting saying like we miss traveling yeah okay cool so should be good here yeah uh, 
Wait, Should we sec, try wait, to why? see? One second. Here. I'm not sure you share. Your... Action. Oh, good. I need to quit Skype so I can screen share because of Mac OS. <laughs> uh, I guess re-invite me to call in a sec. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's wait a few seconds. So one, two, three, four. Oh, and now I need to call him on the other account, right? Okay, this one. Awesome. Ding, ding, okay. Ding. And cool. Did you See share if I can your add. camera? Because right now you're just a big S. Oh, good. Like, I mean, uh, the S logo of Skype, of course. The Skype? Okay. If, yeah, yeah. There oh. you go. Yeah, now you're back. That's awesome. Cool. cool. So uh we're gonna do this uh cd temp we're gonna do a speed run of uh should i share your screen now uh, of what we did before yep can you yeah 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 for sure okay so we'll let you work while you're speed running this level yeah <laughs> we already did that so it's fine can explain so now he's doing like you know this and yep. the capital d is for like strong dependency it's very important different the smaller d <laughs> is imply <laughs> in the npm you thought i was not listening <laughs> i was no, you're fine you're being very you're listening very intently i i, I could tell <laughs> Oh my god. So yeah, that was like the first thing that hit me when I tried like because I heard a lot of I don't want like I no, I shouldn't talk to you. Oh okay, it's loading. No, go ahead. I heard yeah. people doing a lot of notes saying like the package and Node.js and like it's long and everything. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're complaining, you know. But like the yeah. first time I did my uh package update, something like that, like you know, like then it fetched all the package and it took forever. And I was like Whoa, this is long. I have nothing yet in my uh, in my project. It's like, okay, now I understand. Yeah, it's a thing uh, I, I didn't know. Like I, I I kind of knew, but never experienced. That's the that's the proper yeah. word. See, now it could be recorded. We don't know because he's just calling <laughs> Express once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's like, like no keyboards, key keyboard sounds. Yeah, it's probably all recorded now. Yeah, it's the, the dang butterfly keyboard on the the Mac. Um, yeah, and it you know it was a, a great excuse to get a Mac demo in. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, well, you should have a dongle, don't you? Don't you have a dongle on Mac to plug it uh, on a cable? Keyboard. There's so I don't have a dongle. I have a dock that then hooks. Like I have a very complicated Mac setup, and usually my, my Mac is actually sitting in this this dock over here. I, I assume you can see that, but like this dock mm -hmm. here, it sits vertically in that. So I never have it open. So that's why like I wasn't doing it initially on my Mac. Uh, let's see. After I get, uh... well, I have a, a dock for like my uh, my new laptop, mm -hmm. but. Uh... I didn't like is it, like it's not a dock it's just like it, it holds the laptop vertical so it yeah. takes less of space and then I plug something in and I was very tempted to buy a like USB C dock but uh, I'm happy I didn't do it because apparently there's none who could work with my uh, my machine because the machine is too powerful too powerful yeah it takes oh, 130 yeah. watts Ooh. Yeah, yeah, like it's That's a big machine. I like, yeah, it's a it's a laptop for video rendering and uh, streaming oh, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's, it's not the regular machine. So I, yeah, you, so you didn't like, you didn't go with the tower for that? Well, I have a tower, but like I bought this machine for when I will be traveling because I want to stream oh. and I want to video edit when I'm streaming and stuff like that. So I needed something kind of tiny, though it's not really tiny and powerful yeah. but now we're not traveling anymore so i was just like yeah okay <laughs> hey, yeah Where's it's ports? a no it's a laptop but it is like yeah my my daughter was like yeah you could play game on that so yeah that's why i won't install any game on it <laughs> <laughs> 
okay. but totally like it's a big uh, XPS 15 from Dell yeah it's a really nice machine oh no nope, that's strong port uh, we should be good here I I will increase the font size on my browser one sec. there you go that's cool fine. okay back to where we were cool hello Oop. Express well we lost the uh, emoji but that's fine no, nothing yeah. emo emoticon, whatever, emoji. Yeah, so let's see here. Uh, oh, well, fine, I'll add it back. You you convinced me. <laughs> wow. You got it. <laughs> that was emoji. hard. Okay, yeah, it, was, I, it t takes a lot of convincing for me to add emoji to anything. So, uh, the, the chat cool. didn't even have the chance to jump on it. Yeah, so let's see here. Uh, we're going to now... Let's see if we can just get this up into Azure. So I think I think I do actually need to install the uh, Azure Azure app I service. Think. Uh, I need to install app service. So I, okay, I have yeah. I have I, I kind of go through and prune. I go through and add and re-add things uh, over time, just like as I'm using some some more than others. Yeah. Uh, I did a request to have in Visual Studio a way to have some activate list i forgot the name that i gave yeah uh just to like depending on the context will disable or enable some extension to keep your visual studio quick yep. and you cannot do that like you could do it as an extension but then like you're super rude because you're just killing other extensions so like like you know it will look like you're hacking badly so it must be part of visual studio to to make sense but yeah. uh like yeah there's not enough people asking for that so yeah could you could you kick it to our dual camera real quick while i sign in with my microsoft <laughs> yep yep Reds. just one sec one Thanks. sec okay yep no worries cool Whew. Now the I, if oh. I'm not mistaken, uh, I just needed to click it. Never oh, mind. Oh no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so uh, the no, project good. extension, if I'm not mistaken, like there's the workspace where you could say, oh, like that's the thing I want in that workspace, and the project, I think it's a little bit like that where you could uh, load or on. I like I forgot, but like what I need is let's say. I want to open Visual Studio and say, now I'm in node mode, for example, for today. And like mode Azure. So I have like the tool that are useful for JavaScript. I maybe have the Azure component and stuff, but my .NET tools are not present. So my Visual Studio is super responsive and blah, blah, blah. When I open Visual Studio Code, so today I'm working on a .NET side and like switch .NET. And now I have like no node, the .NET are there. Or maybe I'm just blogging today, so no extension at all, like super fast, just the markdown tool and stuff like that. So like, like really disable, so they're not even loaded in the system. So like your Visual Studio is like, so that was the point of my request. It's it's there, it's in Git. A lot of people are doing plus one, but not enough. Are you, uh, are we still on dual camera? We're just her face. Okay, cool. Do you want to kick it over to the screen share again? Yep. Just waiting for you, Q. Cool. I I, I realized <laughs> it was... Uh... Oh, you're waiting for me? Yeah, yeah, I was waiting for you to tell me, like, it's fine. I don't want to... I oh, was yeah, not yeah, looking. Yeah. I see your yeah, screen yeah. on, a, on, you know, on, yeah. on our Skype, but I didn't look at it. <laughs> um, it turns out I, I was already signed in. I didn't need to uh, do anything. <laughs> I just needed to click. Uh, so, cool. I'm using the the app service extension so this is the one you can just download it from the extension store yeah when you um, install that by it default extension. it will install the azure right azure account management yep. i think yep. yeah and so there's actually so i think the one i'm using might be slightly different because in insiders this has been here for a while and it's hands down my favorite thing that i don't know if it's made it into a normal release yet but there's actually this new accounts thing here um, okay. that's in the insiders build yeah i have it now and uh, uh, not insider it's so cool it's so basically like i'm signed in you know with with my microsoft account and so extensions like uh you know app service or static website or whatever um any of those can actually just request to have access to that ex that those credentials so like i have like five or so github extensions they can all just request ex access to my 
GitHub credentials that are like signed in here, which is just so nice for for this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm in App Service here. Uh, here's the App Service extension. I clicked the plus, which will just create a new new resource. Um, I selected my my personal subscription. Uh, we're gonna oh, lowly unique uh, node on Azure. I'm sure that's no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so we can go with node on Azure. Uh, we're gonna do everybody node LTS. Assume. So right now, what he's doing is creating uh, some like prepping some Resources. configuration so we create yep. a resource in Azure, an app service to be exactly. Yep. Yeah, so I went through and went ahead and selected the subscription I wanted and then selected, uh, what was the thing I just selected? Uh, oh, the, the name. So the name of the thing when it's gonna be online and then I'm gonna select the runtime. So I just selected node LTS. I believe that's node 14 or the latest node LTS, which is node 14, but I, I'm not sure where the lines are there. Um, but yeah, I believe that's node 14. So it's going ahead and just doing this work for me in Azure. Yep. Uh, and then once that's done, uh, we should have that up and running. Yeah, and we shouldn't get in trouble from Damien because we didn't right click deploy, right? It was a plus no, deploy. No, so we're but totally I... fine. Damien won't, yeah. won't get mad at, at us. <laughs> And uh, I will try to find you the, the link uh, for my GitHub. I'm assuming that's the link that was requested from my request on Visual Studio Code. Um, oh yeah, so I, I do want to say, uh, while, this is, while this is creating the app service plan, uh, yeah. Brett said dev container Docker file so you don't have to in, uh, install NPM or .NET SDKs, et cetera, VS Code extensions, yeah. so. I, I've actually been working on some dev container stuff. Uh, if you go to the GitHub org, uh, codespa or github.com slash codespaces dash examples, um, there's a dev container there for Node, uh, Go, and Rust, and also a base container that's not language agnostic. Um, but yeah, so I'm very familiar with dev containers and the Docker file setups there. Um, highly recommend, they're actually really nice. Um, but I, I generally, when trying to like um, initialize, I, I generally try to go with just the raw JS on my platform, largely because often I will find bugs in a non-sanitized environment that I wouldn't find in a sanitized environment. And I want to make sure I'm, I, I generally work on like modules and uh, things that like I can then consume in something like, you know, an API. So like I built a node version API that I deployed to Azure Functions that basically consumes some data that I made in a module and then resurfaces that in a slightly different way. Um, in those cases, I generally try to have it in a, a more agnostic environment and then test it on everything in a more sanitized environment. That way I can find some some issues like that. Cool. So wait, okay, left click deploy. Gonna get mad at us for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just clicked deploy uh, when that po when the toast popped up there. Uh, sure, yeah, I'm gonna update that. Uh, yes, cool. So now it's deploying it. So it, before it was creating the resources in Azure, I believe I I believe I default to US East two, although I could be wrong. And then now it's going ahead and uh, deploying it. So if we look at the output window, let's hope there's no. Okay. I thought for for some reason I read that is check output window for problems. I'm like, oh gosh, why are you telling me to look at it for problems? But it says status. So yeah, we're we're going ahead and blowing that. Uh, it will be here. So I believe if we actually go to this now, uh, I do want to add that to my trusted domains eventually. But uh, so yeah, right now it's going to be unavailable because it's deploying. Uh, but from there, uh, it should just work. We might have to add an npm start. So to do that, we would just do scripts uh, start and then node app.js. Uh, and then we also want to make this. I actually uh, guarantee it's going to do that. Uh, there we go. So yeah, we might have to do a re redeploy there. But with with npm start, uh, so you know the start script that that is what uh, Azure app service looks for when you are uh, going ahead and getting a deployment up. So it will automatically try to run that uh, and, and that will kind of start your app uh, in the cloud. Okay. I know we're low on time. 
Oh, we'll still have half an hour. Oh, good. Good. I was very concerned that, that I had a minute to deploy this and yeah, get that. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no. No, it's 90 minutes. And like when cool. I invite people on the show, they're always like 90 minutes. Like, I don't know. And then, and then like first thing I know is like two hours would have been perfect. <laughs> yup. So we might yep. go for I... two hours in the future. I, I will be happy because then, you know, we can have our time yeah. and like go deeper, ask more questions and, but you know, yeah. Well, we'll so I'm yeah. Gonna re- let's I'm let's gonna finish this right first run. <laughs> I'm gonna right click deploy. See, I, I clicked I clicked the up button rather than the right click deploy. <laughs> so he, he again can't get mad at me. There's all kinds. Of, he needs he needs to update that 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 term because there's all kinds of ways to get around it. Yeah, totally, totally fine. Yeah. So uh, currently doing that, it's zipping it up. Uh, so basically how these deploys work is uh, the extension zips basically zips your app and then ships it up um, and then unzips it on the server that uh, it, it has been a, a way that I've noticed uh, we actually get a little bit better performance out of that rather than just transferring each file individually um, you know doing some some tests with uh, one of my coworkers uh, it's been really interesting to see you know how different ways you can kind of optimize deployments especially with node and python um i don't know why them those specifically but um those two like zip deployments are actually pretty fast compared to oh yeah uh, other 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 avenues of deploying which is it's you know nice to know that uh going up well they're all, always trying to do better yeah um so yeah so just want to close that parentheses so i will share the link in the chat about my uh, feature requests uh it has been closed because of the far for visual so it has been closed and i think i agree and i even close it myself um because of the like the rudeness of you know disabling or shut it down other extension it yeah. was kind of strange but in a performance state of state of mind, it was making a lot of sense. But yeah, shutting down the stuff or others. Yeah. It'd be nice if you could allow, like similar to the accounts thing, allow certain extensions to have that. Yeah, like you know, like you're switching context. Okay, now I'm in this focus. I don't know, like I don't like. Maybe it was me that I didn't verbalize it correctly in my uh, request. But anyway, I spoke to the. The VS team and uh, yeah, but yeah, they had the other, a little bit like profile, like a profile, like a workspace. They have very similar thing, but it's not axed on how, like, what are the extension available. Yeah. And I agree. Like, I I better have them fixing whatever like issue that. You know, everyone is hitting then my little thing that, you know, I yep. will be happy. <laughs> yeah. I'm going into my <laughs> dashboard. If curious. Skype will die, teams will be, teams will win. Hmm. I don't know. I was on a call earlier today and uh, it was super cool because uh, I was doing some recording. So right now. I have a, I am doing a Skype call with Rini, where like I take his camera and like I use it in my OBS to project it, but uh, now it's also possible through Team, though it's a, a preview feature. So I was on a call and someone else was doing the recording, and uh, we used Team to to do the recording. But. Uh, I will wait until uh, like it's GA, but I think the target is August, so should be cool. Nice. So I'm going through and just doing this in the, uh, so in the extension here. Did it fail? It, yeah, it failed. It said it's unavailable. I, I don't know if I'm getting rate limited or uh, like resource exhaustion for, for me, or if it's uh, just that I set up the thing wrong. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's go here. Yeah. Oh, I don't want monitoring. Next. 
I don't care if it gets deleted when I get audited. <laughs> so right now, uh, like you're, I will like focus on like the form. I will just explain. So right now you went to the Azure portal, so portal.azure.com. You click the app service. So that's like a very broad name. And if we simp oversimplify it, we could say website. Yeah. And then you just answer a little bit of what we had previously saw in Visual Studio Code, meaning like the resources, the name of that resources, you pick the location, uh, like that, like where the website will be, uh, like which, uh, well, what's the word? Data warehouse it will be in uh, across the globe. I'm assuming by default you pick East US because you're based there. Uh, I think I picked Central. Oh, I think see? it was just the default that I went with it. But oh, yes, excellent. And then, um, so yeah, so now it will create a website, but a kind of an empty shell. And then from there, we'll be able to push the code. And we're getting raid again. So welcome, crazy, crazy pie. Welcome to the stream with a party of 11. Just arrived in time to uh, have fun in Azure. Just creating a... Uh... I think I might have messed that up and done app service or... Uh... Oh, we, we can see. I think I didn't. Uh, you did an app service a, instead of a web app? No, I, no, I did a. Uh, I think I did ASP. <laughs> oh, uh, when you select the like the 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 runtime. Yeah. Let's see here. No, let's see here. That's one, sad. Okay. <laughs> I I think I selected the the run the correct runtime. But I, uh, I didn't watch you. I was looking for my GitHub yeah. repo. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Wait, I don't want that one. I will repeat it because a lot of uh, people have joined since then. But uh, like any time, feel free to ask questions. So we are doing a very basic node application while deploying it in Azure and kind of exploring to see like, you know, the most current way. Like if you're trying or using Express in Node, so the package is very broadly used. So that's why we picked that one. So yep. just to show you how to you could deploy uh many different ways <laughs> you know we saw it yeah quickly in visual studio and now from the portal deploy a resource in, a, in azure so we'll move our little website our little dummy website in azure yep but of course it works with big a complex website but that's not the point of today yeah we'll have you come back at the next session and like had a database and like bunch of stuff <laughs> yeah sounds good and then i will i will be happy because i will learn a lot of node stuff <laughs> what kind of get database do you want to connect it to do you want to do a mongodb one or in a container do you want to do cosmos db what know. do you want to do well <laughs> we'll figure it out yeah, yeah. Not, not today well, like, yeah, I don't think today we'll we'll have. Yeah, yeah, of course you could do CLI and a bunch of, and curl if you want, and like. Yep. Uh, the point of using usually a graphical tool where you, when you're demoing is just a little bit more interesting for the viewers instead of just looking at text. But of course, everything that is possible through the portal, or. Of course, Visual Studio Code is possible through uh, PowerShell or CLI. There we go. We got it working. I yeah, think I just messed and up. And could you could you just like n not maximize so we could see the URL? Oh, kind of uh, like the ultimate. I don't. I don't think I can change the size of the URL. <laughs> no, no. But like right now, it's hidden uh, under the the title. So if you oh, demaximize gotcha. the window there and just go. move it, like that. Yeah, that that's good. good. Cool. So yeah, node so no on... Here, I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat. Or actually, if you want to drop it. You don't have any Zoom tool? What? What's this is a Zoom tool? <laughs> like a uh, Zoom it and stuff like that. Like magnify, oh, magnify, magnif Like I that don't... word is way too hard to say. There, magnificent. There sense? is one. I don't know how. To, what the key shortcut is though. Come on, chat. So... Come on. What is it? <laughs> what's What's the shortcut on Mac OS for that? Oh yeah, no, no, he's on Mac. When, uh, yeah, well, I switched to Mac midway through the stream. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't keep it too long on on uh, Windows. Ah, 
come on, like we're 64, yeah. 74 uh, people on the chat. I'm sure someone knows. Anyway, it's, like uh, I think you you can you can read the the URL. If I can, I'm sure most of, of everybody can do it. So cool. So now we have a, a website, yeah. and usually it's very flawless. It's just like we hit all the bump that that's possible. Yup. <laughs> doing so as always. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, a demo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so we got that up now. Um, would you like to go further in on, uh, like, calling out to an API or something? Yeah, that could be cool. Because I think, like, okay. I'm trying to see, like, how we can, like, right now, how much time do we have? Like, about, let's say, 15, 20 minutes. So yeah. we could call whatever an API, an Azure function, something, some like you know, okay. like a, a usual scenario. Like we have a yeah. Let's see here, that's what I want. Cool. So one of the things I enjoy uh, is XKCDs. I occasionally go through, and there's some real great ones. So what we're gonna actually do here is we're gonna leave that route how it is. App .get. And we're gonna go ahead and create uh, a new route. And we're gonna create our kind of own custom viewer for for XKCD. Cause they actually have uh, an API basically that all of the data from each of their things, uh, each of their comics is like published, including title, title, all the text, uh, the image link and everything like that is all published. Um, so if we're going to do that, we can just go ahead and first, uh, locally, we're going to test res.send rec.query. So to answer someone's question earlier, I think I lost who, who asked this, but someone asked, uh, what quest, uh, asked what kind of the request looked like. So if we go ahead and do this, let's see here. Who's the uh, Azure main competitor? Like in any cloud provider, the main one would be Amazon, I'm assuming, and Google. Yeah. Like it's a cloud provider. So there's like, I don't know, like how many hundreds of services over there, but like, you know, yeah. like any major player or competitor. Uh, You can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. You thought I didn't? Uh, no, I just wanted to make sure I, you could. I just making sure. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, App.js, cool. Okay, so if we go back to our uh, local host uh, 8080 and then comic. So currently that's an empty object, but if you do that, something like uh, hello equals world, that basically each each parameter on that query string becomes a property. So what we want to do here is actually kind of leverage that to our advantage because XKCD is like straightforward, like it's numerical every time. So they kind of um, increment that version over time. So like, you know, each each comic is successively the next one. Um, so what we want to do here is actually go ahead and uh, pull from their, their API basically. So we're, to, for an example of that, we're going to do uh, HPS and then like, let's see, 1919. I have no clue what this one is, so, you know, <laughs> word of warning there. Drum uh, roll here. Dot zero dot JSON. So basically, appending this to any... Yeah, we, any we couldn't thing. see uh, like... Um, oh, yes. There. The URL. Sorry, yeah, so uh, XKCD and then like any comic link. So like, you know, 1919, for example, um, it has all this metadata, including the link, the alt text, the transcript, although this one doesn't seem to have a transcript. Um, yeah, so these are all properties that we could get. So what we can do is we can actually go ahead um, and, and do 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 some more work. So if we're gonna do this, let's do, uh, we're, we're gonna actually install uh, 
a module that's now, now well, let's let's do bent npm i. Uh, let's do request. So we're gonna install a module that's now deprecated, but it's one I, I still like using. Um, so do as I say, don't don't do as I do. Um, but this is just a simple HTTP request library, basically. Um, it was around for years and years and years uh, and powered much of the internet. Um, but the maintainer does not have time for it or interest in it anymore, so he deprecated it. Um, yeah, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually set up a request here. So const request. If you trust uh, Vino, you, I, the request is to do... Uh, 327. Yeah. I don't know if I do trust that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I half trust you here. If, if you have least... uh, another screen tested in another screen, or maybe I, should, I could do. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the title. Like, mm, I, I, without loading the image, I, I will consider that potential. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you tell me uh, if, if that's one we could do. Uh, cool. So request. So yeah, what we're going to do is basically get the ID, so request query ID. So let's try loading that again, node app.js. And then uh, if we load our app again, okay, so it won't return anything if there's no ID. So if we do uh, ID equals world, cool. So it's gonna log world. And then if we do ID equals 1919, cool. So 1919, cool. So it's returning the thing we want on basically the value of ID as a property. So what we can do is actually go ahead and do uh, if there is a request dot query dot ID, then we can do request HTTP uh, and the, uh, I think they have S XKCD dot com, and then we're gonna do uh, so we're actually not gonna use a normal string here. We're gonna use backtick string. Uh, I forget what it's called in JavaScript, but are you familiar with this, Frank? Sorry, I was reading the joke. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I was partially following, but I missed your question, I'm sorry. Yeah, so did you, uh, are you familiar with like the backticks in, in JavaScript? I believe it's called yeah, the string. Yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I experiment that and I, I love it, though I don't find it very intuitive, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, I, I honestly, the parameters is something I don't find intuitive, but so I just generally use it like this as a way to not have to do like pluses. Um, and it's also more performant, I think. Um, so we're going to do this. We're going to have this as const, uh, actually, no, this is a callback. So, so assuming I'm, I'm not the only one, like I yep. just recently know the use of the backtick is now you could instead of having like concatenation of a string where like you say, oh, put this and then like this has a variable and then like this other part of a string you could just like put everything in it when it's defined yep. between back tick. And yep. then you put the dollar sign and the curly brackets and your variable's name. So this yep. way at the end, it's like doing a concat of the first part a variable and like any other parts you have. Yeah, so basically doing it the back ticks is the same as doing it like this of like string plus <laughs> thing plus other string um it, and it's it's just a little bit nicer to read at least i think so yeah like uh, yeah, yeah most of most of the time like and i think there's some time where like you won't like do you have a string builder in a uh, node uh what do you mean string builder okay you don't like you know it's okay. just like when you will be adding a lot of uh string to a you know, let's say you're building a yeah. document. So. Uh, so we generally do, it's just like a, a fundamental thing that JavaScript is like easy, easily enables. And so I think people just use the primitives for that generally. Okay. Anyway, so yeah. So yeah, cool. like so, sometimes you need, but like, yeah. And for short things like that with two, three parts. Yeah. It's wonderful. So we're just setting up an error there. Um, console.log. Oh, wow. OK. Oh, I had a question. So I think that for regular user, Edge HTML or Chromium is zero difference. But for dev, it's better. Uh, like So ed Edge. Edge HTML, I'm not using Edge HTML. I'm using the, the Chromium based Edge. Um, 
but also the, pr the problems of previous well, I'm, I'm using partially I'm still using a little bit of chrome yeah and uh, the edge chromium or edgeium I don't know like yeah. well people give it many different names but the edge using the back end chromium and I love it and honestly it's true that as a user I don't see any difference but the difference is my computer stay very fluid because it's more efficient so yeah I have a strong machine so it you know takes a lot to slow it down but if I had the slowest mesh so I yeah I think if you are not a developer and you have like a regular laptop or PC or whatever like using Edgium helps you a lot yeah yeah I would agree and I mean also like the edge edge team is actually basically doing a lot of work uh to kind of re help help chromium get yeah. to a place where it's closer to edge so they're upstreaming a lot of that work uh and that's honest like the battery life stuff is is getting upstreamed into chromium so that's not only going to help edge but that's actually going to help everyone running anything chromium including like electron apps and stuff like that uh which is i i think really cool and thank you everyone for the uh, answer of my uh, string builder question. <laughs> uh, cool. So here, and then we're going to do, uh, how much time do we have left? Ooh, we have 10 minutes. Okay. So we're, we're going to do something real quick here. Uh, so I'm also going to add in uh, handlebars. So a rendering engine. <laughs> uh, so basically what I've done so far um is uh you're building an air uh a request no like you you are calling passing I'm the calling parameter the URL. yeah and then calling the url if yeah, there's sorry, an you error you just show the error you log yep. a message yep and then you start building i'm assuming a response right now where like you're there so yes I'm going to be using that data in. Um, I'm going to be using that data in my response, like what the user is going to get when they request the slash comic endpoint. So engine is going to be handlebars. Uh, so I, I I'm super old school. I learned with handlebars and it works fine. Uh, don't judge me, <laughs> and anyone anyone who's watching, don't judge me. Um, I cannot judge. I really don't know. <laughs> so, it, handlebars is a super old, uh, old. Uh, yeah, rendering old, engine. Right. I said. Yeah. I didn't code JavaScript for the past 15, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, old. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it came out like <laughs> four years after that. Yeah, just like everything is relative, like old, very, very old, like you know, yeah. crazy old, Com like you know, Compa pff, I mean, for, like for, five for, years <laughs> for JavaScript. That's yeah, yeah, that's I know old. what you mean. I was just having fun. Yeah, I know. <laughs> for once, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. I really I'm don't know what happened. So, like, uh, people were asking in the chat, like, if uh, if. I don't think he got fired because a new version of uh, like you know they migrate like I don't think you know I don't think they got fired because like they they moved the back end on on chromium I think it's a smart way to say hey you know what like a bunch of stuff already exists just to, let's reuse it it could have been the move from the architect I really don't know Let's see here. So I'm going to see if I... more than six months. That's what I heard. Like you have new frameworks every day, right? Yep. Uh, so I'm also going to do something real quick here and add a views. I'm getting real, real tight in time <laughs> uh, to, to do this. I really know what you mean by uh, thought I had more time and did not. I've done, I've done a workshop around this in like an hour and a half before. Yeah, but and you didn't have the chat. Streaming's different. Exactly. <laughs> and it's fun. That's why it's so technical. fun. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So I'm going to do head. Oh, that's so fine. I'm just doing, this is just a normal templating engine. Yeah. Uh, uh, so thanks to you, we will come back. Yay. Party time. <laughs> Body. 
That's up was the chat. Sec. Yeah. Uh, I to answer your question, Hugo, I don't, I don't think it will be switching to Shaka JS. Uh, the the Edge team is is contributing pretty pretty actively to Chromium and to to V8 itself. Uh, so yeah, there's I, I I'm pretty sure they're going to be sticking with Chromium as a base and working on making it better for Windows users and for users everywhere, and then also. Uh, uh, you know, help helping out with that uh, globally. So, well, at least for a little while. After that, you know, like if the other one is becoming like uh, the other the other leader or whatever, yeah. who knows? But uh, yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll. I think it'll. We we will be sticking. My my guess as a person who works on web stuff, not as a Microsoft employee, I have no clue what the Microsoft plan is. Um, is that we'll be sticking on this stuff for a while. And 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 Microsoft, like if you look at it, like usually they don't deprecate or change too often. They try yeah. to keep that because they are the business people to uh, to support and everything. So yeah. like usually they will keep things there for a while. Not saying they won't try it. Like I, I, I don't know that other engine, but uh, like I'm sure someone will try it. And but right now they just put a lot of effort for Chromium. So yeah. Yeah. So the other engine is actually what we're using right now. So V8 is the engine in Node, uh, which I'm happy about because it means uh, you know there's there's less engines that I, I have to to focus on uh, in in my normal work. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, V8 is actually the JavaScript engine that powers uh, powers uh, Node. Okay, so what we did there is we went through and what created a handlebars template, put it in our views folder. Uh, you know, it's taken a title, an image, and a description, which are the things we built earlier: title, image, and description. Uh, we're saying render, so we, we also set up a view engine. So we set our engine to handlebars and are calling handlebars for that. Uh, oh, I did not mean to move that out. Uh, I don't know if this request is going to work because it's saying it's not getting called. Oh, OK, this is why. So we're renaming request to R because <laughs> uh, we have a response in our quest here. And that was conflicting. Um. Uh, um, yeah, uh, and then that should work i'm sure it won't uh yeah so we set up a oh my gosh it worked uh let's see if it actually does it so <laughs> yeah. uh that's it's honestly scary that it did work um so yeah app.engine we set our, our handlebars engine and set our view engine and then let's go down here nope let's see what how it crashed uh let's see here so response.render is not a function Response.render. I spelled that wrong. I spelled one of these wrongs. Okay, so I, I, sp I think I said respond. Respawn. No, what? What am I doing here? Why is this not? Is it okay. info.0.json? So this is correct. It's okay. what sync is happening here. Is that? Yeah. So that's not getting called because it's in the if. That's interesting. Uh, here. That's uh, that is uh, that is an interesting one. Oh, okay, okay. I see. So I was actually in the callback rather than uh, rather than outside of it, which I should I should be. Hmm. Oh, okay. So uh, there's also a response here. So it was calling that response. So we're going to call that one res. Uh, and we're, we don't care about that one, really. Uh, I don't think. Let me double check. Uh, we do care. Cool. Uh, that should be fine. Okay, let's try it again. Oh boy, views layouts, okay. 
keys, layouts. Cool. Let's try that again. Cool. <laughs> uh, views. Yep. Boy. I think I agree with you. Uh, right, Aki? Oh, yeah. We're time, aren't we? No, no. It says like a uh, time script. Oh. So, see how to build component with TypeScript is nice. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. I've honestly, uh, I feel like Microsoft Design. Uh, yeah, TypeScript is is pretty nice. Uh, he's he's awesome. He's just trying to rush in one minute without like. <laughs> yeah, I don't got this in one minute. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so basically uh, we want to be deploying this and this could, this could be what we do next time and we can say, say request a database. Yeah, uh, we'll so recap we that a lot database. next time. We'll say, okay, we have an app, we had yep. like an API, we'll deploy that and then we'll add more stuff. Yep. And uh, yeah, well, you know what? I was, let's, let's switch on the side by side. Thank you a lot for all that uh, giant gymnastic today, <laughs> switching <laughs> PC and deploying yep. three times the app and everything. It was really appreciated. I learned a lot of stuff. I hope you chat learn also a lot of stuff today on Node and a little bit of Azure too, because you know, where we do all things around Azure. So that's always cool. And yep. uh, to the chat, thank you for spending a few uh, hours with us. Really appreciate it. And thanks to yep. you. This guy will come back. Wait, I don't know which direction it is. Which one? I've got it right. I got one of them right. <laughs> it's always got like that's one thing, right? Up, it's easy. Yep. Down, but yep. like ref and light, it's always like. Mm. I need to watch myself. <laughs> so, okay, this this side. So thank you again. I will say yep. bye bye and see you uh, on the next time. Bye. bye.